This video will take the next step in building up the Stream Deck Plus in Reactor. And the focus will be the first encoder and the display associated with that one. So in the previous episode, we have uh, worked on the buttons on top of that. And now we'll do what you are seeing right here in this display. So let's just check, revisit the functionality. We went through it in the first episode to make sure that we uh, understood what the overall scope of this series is. But um, basically, it's a transition a selection button. So I can go uh, wipe, dip, I can go to mix, I can also go to uh, DVE. So basically going through all the transitions that is found in an ATEM switcher. We have the ATEM switcher here. So you can see as I'm turning the knob, I'm actually browsing these different ones. I can also choose here. So there's always this duplex functionality that is an inherent part of how we roll. So if I go to wipe, uh, to dip, for instance, you see dip here. If I press the button right now, it will now select a, um, a show me the transition rate for the dip transition. Let's just see here. So if we collapse this one and go to the dip, it says uh, one second and three frames. That corresponds to 33 uh, uh, frames. And if I change that on the knob here, you can see this number is changing along over here in the SIFT, uh, ATEM software control. Now, for much of this video, we'll just focus on what we see on the screen in the emulated environment because that's exactly the same. So let's just uh, zoom in here and check um, by using the emulator how it works. We do that by selecting simulation work simulation mode. And uh, as I'm pressing these, um, sorry, uh, if I'm pressing the, the buttons down here, then you can see this corresponds to turning the encoder uh, just one notch and then the display is being updated. So we need this. We also need to see if I click the encoder, I'm just doing that right now, that I'm changing forth and back between this. And that is kind of the same as what uh, Stream Deck themselves call stacking. They allow you to stack multiple actions on a button on these encoders as something new in the uh, Stream Deck Plus. And of course, we can do the same, mimic that. So we'll be looking at how can we do stacking inside of Reactor uh, in this case. Now, we have actually made an intelligent stack because notice that right now we are looking at the frames for dip. But if I click here and if I change to, let me see, we get wipe here, then I click once, then we have a different frame rate. So we are also detecting that. And if I go to uh, a transition that doesn't have it, then we just see nothing and we can go in and out. So that's what we'll be looking at right here. But first we'll find that project that we have we are trying to build up because what you just saw was the end goal project. And we are working on the uh, plus video project here. So I'm just changing project on my blue pill. Everything is run by the blue pill here so that um, uh, th this is where the reactor is running. The web UI we're using, the software is running on this little device. And this is how far we got on our configuration. So last time we focused on these and now we'll be looking at the encoder and creating graphics for that display. So um, I was just studying the code we did before and there were a few things related to graphics that I wanted to point out. First of all, these icons up here, they are filling the display and centering themselves because they are like one-to-one -one by the pixels that they are allowed to use. And that is not ideal because if you look at the icons, the way they were designed, there's actually a little bit more room around them. And you can see the same for the cut icon as well. So it's it's like being, you know, cropping out the center of that. And I want to correct that. So let's just quickly go into the JSON. Oh, wait, this is, this is not necessary. We can, uh, yeah, JSON is necessary. But what I want to do is to, mm, why did button number four end up down here? That's actually a mistake. We want that to be up on this layer. So what I would do is to click the cut button here, then go into the show JSON and then format the whole thing and just make this a little bigger. Now, what, what we need to do is to add something here. So I place the cursor here. I type enter for new line, hold down control space. I get some options and then look for image fitting. And then you can do the same once again. You can hold down control and space and you see options. This is what happens every time you see me do this, I use control space. And now the option fill that I'm looking for is actually the one I'm going to end up with. But if I choose fit and if I save, then you'll see that now the icon will fit inside the available area. But what I want, because I'm okay with a little bit of cropping to utilize the pixels on the side, I would be happy enough if we are not using fill. Let me see, it's all the way down in the bottom now. So instead of fit, I will use fill like this and then save. And now you'll see that it's actually filling the whole area and allowing a little bit of cropping. I want to do the same over here. So let's just quickly do that. I will type control space image fitting. Thank you. Control space fitting. 
fill, save. Watch out for the commas. There has to be a comma here because there's still some JSON on this object, uh, all the fields in the object. And there you go. Then this is fixed. All right. So then we just fixed a few things from the past. And now we need to move forward on the encoder. As we are now programming every encoder on the Stream Deck Plus, it is useful to encapsulate them into their own layer for um, various reasons, not only to be able to actually do what we want, but also to organize the, the elements that we are creating, like variables and master behaviors and so on. So the first thing I want to do is to uh, create a child layer of the Plus for Video layer, and we'll call that Transition. So all our work related to this will happen inside of that layer. So that's the first thing. And other than that, I could basically go on with the uh, encoder here and then make it a transition change type. So let's just um, right click on the encoder, create behavior, then create. Yes, thank you. And it is on the right layer. Yes. And then we go to the ATEM mini and we'll search transition style. Maybe style. Yes, transition style, that sounds great. We can just hard code it to the ME number one. And uh, now the encoder should actually train, uh, change transition. Let's, let's uh, test it. So we'll just go to the ATEM software control here. And then we have transitioned right there. So let's just uh, arrange the windows a little bit so that it's possible for us to see here in the background uh, as I'm changing these transitions on the uh, panel. Thank you. Okay, so I'm just clicking this button, and you can see that I can go from side to side. So uh, basically, the um, and and why is that? Well, because as I pick the transition style parameter, automatically we had the behavior called step change associated with it. So it decided that uh, most probably the guy wants to just move forth and back in this range of options, and that's what step change gives you the full range of options. Now, <clears throat> I also want something else. When I press this one, I want to do the same that Stream Deck called stacking. That means that we change into a different behavior that will instead show and also manipulate the frame rate, depending, by the way, on which of these um, transition styles that we are using. So that's another thing that we need to do. And therefore, I want to create, uh, first of all, I need to, in order to have that stacking going, I want to create sub layers. So I'll basically have a child layer called, um, let me see, we'll just start with dip frames for the dip transition, like that. We'll just call it that. And we'll also create another child layer called frames for the wipe. Okay. So that is in place. And then I will create a variable here. So we'll call that one. Ooh. Uh, stack. Okay. And it's a variable intended to sort of enable and disable stacking. So now it's stacking just like one dimension, but you can easily do this in, in multiple di dimensions if you want. But because we have like just this extra state, then we'll have a value off and a value on. This is a standard way of organizing these things on like that. Okay. So we have this variable here. And then basically what I want to do is to set an active if condition. And active if conditions means that I will uh, say, okay, if my variable called stack is equal to, and then I edit this one, set it to a literal value of on, which corresponds to the value of the variable. So then this layer will be shown. And I want to do the same up here on wipe. So I'll make a condition for that. That visibility condition is the way we are telling the system that um, on. Okay. Now, actually, there's more that I want to do because not only do I want the layers to be shown if the stack variable is on, I also want them to be shown depending on whether the particular transition style is being used. So I will add an additional requirement here, which is the transition style like this one for me number one equals a certain value, which is also going to be a literal value. And now I have the problem. Do I know that value? And in fact, I don't. So I'll just keep that open for now and then see. OK, let's just submit. So now you can see this is an incomplete condition. But basically, it says if stacking is on and if the transition style is a particular one. So what is that transition style? This is where you normally need to dig a little bit into the um, parameters of the device core here. So you would go to the device cores on the home screen and 
choose parameter list. So we'll just keep this tab open and then let's just search, search up transition style right somewhere close by. Yes, there we go. Now this is what we are looking for, these values. Sorry guys, many times there's a little nice drop down. You saw it in the first episode with relation to the inputs that they were actually labeled and that was super easy. Other times you need to go into the parameter list to figure out what the value is. It is zero, one and two. So one for dip, two for wipe. All right, so far so good. We go back in here and we go to the config tab and we edit our um, and now we can just edit it by simply saying him, hmm, what is this? This is wipe that was uh, wipe that was two. Okay, done. There we go. Uh, and now I'm a little bit lazy, so I'll just copy this one and go down here and edit raw and I'll paste this one in. Now, ooh, wait, that was a one, supposed to be a one, right? So done. What about this one? That was done. Okay, so we can even read it over here. So stacks is on, stacks is on, and transition style is two and one. Okay. So it might just work. Now, uh, to test this before, because we also need to modify our encoder behavior. So basically every time you press the encoder, it has to toggle the stacking on and off. That's how we want this to work. And it's gonna be fairly easy, I would say. But uh, let's just, for now, go to the variable and then manipulate it here directly. So we'll just do that by changing these values on and off. Now, these layers are not uh, enabled, apparently, because um, the, uh, we, the, the transition is currently DVE. Okay, so let's just pick dip as the transition and then we turn this on and off again. Now you can see the moment we had dip, this layer is visible. If I go to wipe, this layer gets visible. So it is picking up and enabling layer visibility based on a parameter value from the ATEM switcher. You can do that with any device that we can connect to and read state back from. So this is just a component of how Reactor is working. So wonderful. Now, um, that encoder is basically just step change combined with a parameter. My intention now would be to create a master behavior using step change, but adding a event handler that will rotate the value of stack. All right, so let's just try that. Basically, um, we don't always need to copy master behaviors from something. So I think maybe in this case, um, step change with stacking, stack rotation. Okay, step change from stack rotation. Choose, we'll just go edit it. We'll pick a step change master behavior here. I will uh, we don't need to set the parameter basically, but as I as I go in here now, then instead of using step change, I will use step change with uh, stack rotation. This one I just created. And uh, that means as I'm now going in here and editing this guy, then uh, we'll see the effect of this. Okay, so uh, let's go into the, um, yeah, maybe just confirm and it is actually still, this behavior we have here for encoder number one is still rotating our uh, transitions and we can see the effect also on the layer visibility as this, um, oh, it's because stacking is on, okay. So this is why we see it rotate. But we need to recreate that behavior on the layers up there to override it with something. Okay, so let's just go to, to off basically. But hey, um, what we need to do is to go in here, show more and then we need to add an event handler. Um, you may want to just inspect what these are doing, um, but I'm telling you this is okay. So I'll just say rotate stacks. So we'll create a new event handler for this one and that is basically going to respond to binary press down. The type is uh, act down is when we press it. The edge filter is, yeah, we can choose encoder, but we don't have to because any um, binary trigger from the encoder would be fine. The set mode would be, let me see, let me see, let me see. This is cycle up and roll over. This is where we just want it to rotate indefinitely. And the set values for this one would be, um, this is where we choose the, let me see. Oh, no, 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 variable. And that is the stacks. So to make this really correct, flexible, then you would say this one and the modifier is all. How do I know that? The modifiers is something that you find on a wiki page from Skahoy. It has been shown in other videos and I don't have the link 
right here. It should probably be over here. But this basically means that the values we are rotating between are all options that exist for stack. And that is the option on and off. But if we added the third option, that would be included in this rotation. So then the parameter is the final thing because we also need to actually tell it that it is the variable stacks that we are going to manipulate on this one. Now, we are in simulation mode. So notice what happens with the value over here of stacks. As I'm pressing, it is actually rotating that value because of this event handle I, I just created here. So that's great. Um, hey, graphics, uh, we promised to get started on that one. And OK, so on this layer, I would um, now disable this guy and click here. Now, I think when I tried this out at first, then I sometimes had a little bit of difficulty. But OK, not in this case. Because it's like there's actually like the background display can be filled. And then there's like four tiles on top. And right now our little configuration tool here is sort of hiding that I'm actually, if I right click here and create a behavior, I do that for a um, the, the display tile. So we have divided the display into four tiles. But it's actually like one big display you can address. But in the raw panel um, interpretation of the Stream Deck, this is how I've done it. So we we'll just go in here, and what I want to do on this uh, display, it's just showing dummy content right now, is to build a image composition. This is a super advanced concept. Um, but let's see how far we can go. And we are going to reach over and look at our actual source code. So this is the source code of the end project that I demonstrated in the beginning of the video, what is the end result. And um, you see that it has the variable stack associated with it. We have also the master behavior we just created, change step change with stack rotation. So these two are in here. And then we have a layer with a frames uh, wipe. And we see that the condition of this one corresponds also to what we have been, been looking at. So that's really comforting, right? And then uh, we have a layer called fallback. But then and then finally, I have a layer called type, which is where this um, the um, um, these two are actually found. So I, I made additional two layers in my final implementation of this one. But anyway, we want to go in uh, here and create some image output on this one. Now, I think display, no, wait, 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 wait. It's feedback. We need to make feedback conditional. Inside of this one, we have display graphics. And inside of this one, we probably have like type. Are we having type? We have uh, data source, data source. That data source should be composition. And then the type of composition we're doing is, is that type? Nope. Um, composition, data source composition. OK. That one, OK. And inside this guy, then we have layers. And then we can start building up layers here. I think uh, one of these layers is going to be an image. And that image is going to be having a data source inline. And the inline image that I'm going to put in here is that graphic I have from disk. And now I need to show you a little trick, which at least works on Mac, but I'm not sure. This is the wavy lines that I want to put in behind. And um, therefore, I have opened a terminal in this window. No, not that one. I said terminal, please. OK, thanks. And OK, there we are in this uh, one. Base64, you write that, and then you type in wavy, the image name. Tab complete. And it's going to give you the base64 output of this graphic, which is 130, 52 kilobytes. So that's a lot of uh, base64 encoding. We are really stretching the system, but it's working quite well, despite of us being very optimistic about uh, these images. Now, this is now being copied into, um, into Reactor. So let's go over to Reactor here. You type in PNG colon colon, and then you paste in this. Save. And I would really love to see something on my display right now, but I don't. And I'm not 100% sure why I don't. Oh, 
I, I just realized what it was. C, when you have a composition like this one, there's many objects inside that you can create, but you need to select the type. Quite often you need to do that. And the type could be bitmap graphics, mono, rectangle, text, widget, and so on. So we'll just to choose layers. And then it makes sense to use the um, object layers and fill stuff into that. So I'll just save that and that should basically help us to move on here with that composition. Okay, I need to go back and check my source code here a little bit. So we have the layers, we have, um, maybe if we close this one down, we see we have the image. Oh, we need type for image as well. Oh, yes, so on this layer, we also need to have type. So once again, with a little help from our friends, image, we choose that, save, and voila. Okay, so now finally we got this image in, and you see this is a one-to-one -one representation, just like we saw with the icons. Uh, and the one thing that we want to do here is because it's actually taking the center of the image. You can see that it's like cropping the center out of the image. We don't want that. We want it to be left aligned, and then we want to choose offsets as we go. So I'll just go in here and then at the end of this one, I'll type in image, no horizontal alignment, and that would be left. Okay, so now it's going to start the graphic like over here in this end. And then we can specify, as you'll see in uh, further down the road, that we are using an offset to yeah offset this. So basically, we are now started with a composition. And to help ourselves not to make this video longer than it already is going to be, we will copy paste some code from in here. So basically, what we have just reproduced from inside um, the example that uh, actually, this is the behavior from the example code. Um, we have gotten so far that we have display graphics composition, and we are starting this up with the type layers, and then we have a bunch of layers. and. The layer that I just collapsed is the one that's giving us all the content on top. And this layer here is actually our image. And we just created exactly that. So all this is the base 64 encoding of that 152 kilobyte image with the horizontal alignment right there. Oh, there's also a little detail that we should not forget. This called shrink mode is going to be useful as well. That will avoid having a little um, black line in between. Um, but we could also learn by mistake and just wait with that for a little while. Now, let's just collapse this one and then open these layers. And now we are going to copy paste. But as we copy paste, let's go through it on screen and see what is actually happening. This layer is of type graphics. And graphics has then this object that has um, like an array of objects inside, which also has types. One type is text, another type is text, and then we have a type rectangle. So. Um, basically, this first text is, what is it doing? It is taking the name of the current transition style. So this is how we get dip and wipe into the display by choosing that. So um, let's, let's just copy it over in the context. That will make it much easier for you to see what it is that will happen. So I'll just put it in here, basically copy paste this layer in format this. Okay, it all looks nice. There's no red wavy lines and then save. Now you see this is immediately affecting over here how this looks. So let's just go through it. First of all, this layer stack you see here is starting from the bottom, starting creating the black rectangle you see here. And the rectangle is black, but it has transparency of 70%. Of so this is why it's translucent and you see the background in between. It also has corner rounding of 10. And then the width and the height, that's interesting. The, the width is actually depending on the width of the, of the um, overall canvas that we are creating. So minus 30 means take the width of the window and subtract 30. And the same with the height. With the height, I have offset it 25 from the top towards the bottom because by default, this is centered. Okay, and the same with the X for whatever reason, is that really true? I'm surprised. Um, I don't know why the X, what would happen if I change this to zero? Okay, so it goes over here. Okay, maybe I was wrong. Maybe it's not centering the rectangle. So it's just other things that are centered. So in other words, the offset here would put, yeah, it puts the rectangle up in the corner unless I have offsets like offset X, that was, was it 15? 
and offset y, that was 25. Let's try this. Yes, that looks correct. Okay, so I was not entirely right in, in the centering, in the whole centering claim that I just came up with. Now, um, uh, but I think the rest is kind of making sense to you. Then, uh, at least for text, this is how it works. So, um, you can see that oh, maybe that's not how it works. Um, okay, we have two types of text. We have the one called transition, and that is what we see here. We just type the text in, but the other text, dip, is actually taking its source from, and that's by curly braces. It is referring to any IO reference. So, DC colon atom BMD atom one transition style, the current value's name. That is what we get, okay? And um, let's say that we wanted to be fancy and, and do something, you know, like put in some funny symbols or whatever, then we can just do that because you can basically mix literal characters with the value coming out of an IO reference. The size is here, the font is here, the fonts that we can choose between are uh, also possible to look up like these. Many of these are pixel fonts, so they are probably going to look pretty ugly in this case and unnecessary because we have such a high resolution display. But this is really necessary when you're dealing with the OLED displays that is prevalent in uh, Skyhawk controllers. And there are certain sizes that you should choose to do that. But the Notosang is an opened uh, open Google font that um, that is a, a true type font and allows us to render really beautiful text, very crisp and nice. So um, in this case, I am um, the um, I'm offsetting it five, and notice that I have no alignment, so it's actually automatically aligning here by. Um, by the center. And the horizontal alignment here called center left is, oh, sorry, up here. The horizontal alignment called center left, I don't need that. But centering is already done. Center left just means that if, let's say that I made this text really long, then it's still, it's not going to start the word outside the display. That's what center left means. So that's sort of really useful. Uh, let's just go back here on, on this. Uh, it's a little bit annoying. I need to form it every time, but okay. So, um, any other comments on this guy? Vertical alignment. Yeah, so it's aligned with the top. We're offsetting it five, a little bit down. I don't know why I'm telling you that I'm offsetting it five on the X dimension. I'm not sure this is necessary at all. I think that's probably just wrong because then it would not be centered anymore. It would be a little bit to the side. So this seems more right to me, actually. Yeah. Okay. So there you see. And now let's let's try. Let's uh, let's manipulate it because you know that as I'm changing this, it should actually change the the text because this is dynamically inserted. Okay. What we also know is that we need to do something else. When I'm pressing this one, we need to get stuff up here on this layer. So in fact, the encoder needs to be defined up on this layer. So therefore, let's just exit this mode. Create behavior. Oh wait. Ooh. What did I do? Um, I may not have done anything. Yeah, actually I did. That's not a good thing. I just overwrote what this one was doing. So, okay, thanks. Awesome. Now, select the layer, right click, create behavior on this guy, insert here, and then you can do all the same things. Okay, I think at this point, I want to just go back because it's sort of repetition of what we have just done. The other layers that I'm adding is a um, is the layer for frame dip and also the layer for frame swipe, and um, I'll just take these from my project source code and basically throw them in. Um, but I also want to mention something else, and that is that I decided to put the encoder one here onto its own layer called type. And there are a few reasons why I do that, but let's just copy this over into our project. And uh, we open this by editing the raw code here and finding our transition layer, um, inside of which we have these layers. This is where we replace it. So we'll just paste that in and save the current file. All right, so let's just reload everything here. So we have it right there, and then I open plus for video, and then we have the transition layer. You see we have 
a step change with stack rotation is here. Then we have um, this, actually these two. Yeah, okay, these are leftovers from earlier, the, the ones that we just made. Um, okay, so what is actually happening? Let's, let's look at it. First of all, <clears throat> if I emulate this, if I emulate this, Notice that as we are on DVE, none of these layers are actually shown. So if I press this button and I'm rotating the stack variable, then it is showing this layer, the fallback layer. And that gives me just a blank background. So all I did on this guy was in fact to just include, I just made an, the same image composition and I just included the layer right here. So that, but it doesn't have any rectangle on, on top and so on. If I um, change, Sorry, if I go back here, now I'm on, I'm, I'm on this one down here. This is the behavior that is changing the uh, transition. So I go to wipe, I click it once again, and now because it is wiped, then this one gets used, and that means uh, this is the display definition that gets used to show these frames. Now it's exactly the same. I am having the same uh, image in the background. I'm having the black rectangle, no change to that. There's no way we can inherit this, by the way. So inheritance is gone. When you're doing these compositions, it's all the same over again. Sorry about that, but it's just very complex and deep structures. So we can't do that inheritance magic that we're doing everywhere else. It says frame as the headline up here, and then it is using CDC device call ATEM one transition wipe rate and then a little F is added at the end and maybe we thought it would be nice to have a little space there so we could just add that if you wanted to. So that is basically what you find on this one and it would be the same down here. So if we just simulate, we see we should be able to exit this, are we not? Step change with stack rotation should actually change our variable down here. Is it not doing that correctly? I just found a bug. The reason why when I click this one to enable stacks and we got up on the dip layer, the reason why, oh, let me just show it again. Okay, if we are here and we click this one and we, we um, now that one would actually, okay, let me just see. Let's go to dip, okay right here. So I click, I get up here, this encoder behavior defined up here is not going to let me back. And the reason is that the definition of the encoder behavior right here actually had our event handler for the rotate stacks built in and it was not made down on the master behavior, which looks like this. So actually I made a mistake here. I need to go edit this one. So I'll just Basically, this is going to be easy. This is the addition that I was supposed to do on the master behavior. So I'll just take that one out from this one and then copy in here. So I'm really sorry about that. I made this mistake putting it in here. And by the way, these two should be deleted because um, in my copy paste code that I brought over from the uh, actual final project, those two are defined right here.